thank you folks for joining in to the August edition of the product teardown series brought to you by the product folks. And this month we have with us front row. Um, we'll leave it to Ritwik and Shivadit to share more about their journeys. Uh, but just before we jump into you know, the problem statement, the case studies, the finalists and their solutions, let me quickly give you an intro into the community for folks who are joining us for the first time. The product folks is a volunteer driven community of product managers, product enthusiasts, product marketers, and lots more. Uh, we've been around for a little over two years now and are currently India's largest volunteer driven product community. In case you're looking to break into product, do check out our latest program. It's called Insurjo. Um, apart from that, we have a bunch of new initiatives coming up for mid mid senior PMs. And this teardown initiative was, this is probably the 11th edition that we're doing, so 11 months straight. And it is one of my favorite. Um, so stay tuned for the next 60 to 90 minutes. I'm sure you guys will have a great, great session. With that, introducing um, our, our mentors for today. Thank you for joining in, Shubhajit and Ritwik. Welcome to this edition. Thanks so much. Um, without further ado, Shubhadir, in case you want to take it off, would love to hear a little bit about your journey, and then we'll go to Ritwik, um, and then we'll jump into front row's problem statement. Yep, absolutely. So I've been in the startup ecosystem for a long while. Um, um, it's been like this front row is the second company I've helped found. Um, had started another company back in 2015, which was into consumer lending. Uh, was heading technology and product there as well. We grew the company to about 100, like 100 people over a period of uh, one and a half years or so. Um, after that, I've been part of a couple of startups. I've kind of worked in a bunch of diverse industries. I've worked in e-commerce. I've worked in like hyper local e-commerce. I've worked on hospitality at Oyo. Um, worked on blue collar workforce hiring, and finally like um wanted to come into edtech and wanted to build something here um and most of the things i've built have had some sort of an impact angle um so we were doing lending for uh, the long tail of finance and um you know then i was doing blue collar workforce hiring and then i was part of uh, the social commerce revolution which has started um got a chance to you, you know was at oyo for a year or so but there as well we were kind of building this small startup within oyo um and uh, also got to spend i was the first employee in japan with oyo got to kind of do everything there like set up the whole business in japan as the one who found our first office there um literally like we literally signed the first property um went to ikea bought the furniture assembled it ourselves um and uh, got the pleasure of like um checking in the first guest the first ever guest in oyo japan as well so yeah done a ton of interesting stuff um I, all the heart has always been in building something from scratch and uh, that's you know wanted to you know have you know saw a huge impact that we could create in the ed tech space um and uh, that's how front row started that's awesome that's awesome and uh... Ritwik, before we come to you, so how has the journey been so far? If you can share, you know, your experience currently at Front Front Row, I'm sure yep. you know, those early days to today. Anything that you'd like to so share? It's, it's been about a year and a half uh, so far. Um, started in about April last year, March, April last year. Um, interestingly enough, like, uh, like literally when we started, like when the first set of people were supposed to join, the lockdown hit right then. So it was like from day one itself, like you know, it threw a curveball and like we were never expecting that. Um, and it took us some time to launch. Um, we finally ended up launching our product um, towards the end of November, December. And uh, since then, like everything's been, you know, going really amazingly well. Um, our vision of what we thought uh, the product would be has evolved a lot as well. Uh, when we started out, we were just thinking of building this as a celebrity course platform where you could come and learn um, but over time our vision of what we're building has has evolved as well where uh, we've, we're now thinking of this whole platform as something more holistic something um, you know where you could come as a beginner go through the entire journey of becoming an expert in in any of the areas that we're working on 
and you know kind of like building this university of creative arts or non academic uh, learning right and the end goal is not you know just um to take a couple of like to take a course of couple of hours but it's to go through that entire journey um and it takes people years to become better at these things right um and the idea is that we'll be there for them through that entire journey um it, no one becomes a great singer or a dancer or an actor or a you know sports person overnight um it's it's a long and arduous journey that they go through and we want to be there um through them through whatever steps um that you go through to take that journey and provide them to the ways to be able to practice learn um be part of a community um engage with other folks collaborate whatever it takes to do that um we want to provide them that um so that's that's how our journey has evolved as well from from when we initially started very interesting we'll probably dig deeper into that um in the fireside that we have later today but uh, rithvik over to you how is your experience at front row been how is your journey so far been uh so i come from a consulting background i was at bcg before this uh and at bcg i started off working with big corporates and did a lot of work for them and i was lucky enough to build uh one of the like uh, upcoming ev products and that was like my first experience into startups when i actually built the entire uh the entire strategy and the entire ops of like the scooter the battery etc so that was my first flavor of startups and that's when i realized that this is where i want to spend uh, a bunch of my time this is where what i eventually want to get into uh having said that uh, edtech was booming at that time but i was never academically too interested in like k12 or upsc or like test prep kind of a market and i come from a sports background myself i played a lot of sport uh, and uh, then i really resonated with trying to do something non academic uh, build something for what we say the passion economy right now uh, so that was something that really excited me which is why i joined front row and it's been a super exciting journey very fast paced uh, i've done a bunch of things i've like right now i'm looking at product i've done a bunch of things in ops customer support uh, so it's been a very interesting journey and like shubhadeep mentioned like the vision has evolved quite a bit and i think now we like we've reached the point where we're building like all the key pillars that you need to build like a university where your celebrity instructors become one pillar uh, your deeper learning through live classes become another one your infrastructure to practice improve etc becomes another key part and the most important which i'm sure all of us in our college have experienced is the peer network that we built which we call our community uh so i think we are building these four pillars right now and trying and this vision will keep evolving and this is where we are and i think pretty exciting times ahead that's awesome that's awesome um uh, folks who are part of the insurgo program and who participated in this teda uh should be interesting to find some parallels right and if you do spot anything that you know front row is doing better or if you think insurgo is doing better We'd love to hear that in the chat section as we progress. But without further ado, let's get this started. Shubhadeep Ritwik would request you to share with our participants uh, a little bit more about why this specific problem statement. You could share that bit, and then how will scoring today look like? What should our finalists really focus on? Any of you? So I can quickly talk about the problem statement. Uh, so right now, uh, the thing is, the courses uh, are paid. however the other activities on the app which are practice and community are free uh, so what the the real problem that we're facing right now is our acquisition actually comes from people viewing these celeb celebrity ads or are attracted by the celebrity part uh, and wanting to learn from them uh, but when they come on the app the first thing they see is the celeb course currently but maybe that's not what they want as soon as they come onto the app but they actually want to they come with a very different objective to learn uh, and we are not able to a identify what they are coming to do and b even if we are we are not able to show them the right thing because we have a lot of things that will interest different personas but we are still struggling to actually find what should we show first to what kind of a persona which is why we are trying to actually find like an aha moment that we can give to any user that comes within the first 5 minutes of then 
uh, coming onto the app, which is why this was a problem statement that we detailed out. And we also made it specific to one particular interest, which is music, because uh, the personas are very different. The users are very different by the art form slash sports that they come for, which is why we wanted to keep that cut as well. Cool. Uh, just to add to that, um, this is this is the point which is the top of the funnel, right? So it also has the most impact. And like, if you look at other products, um, the onboarding journey or the the first interaction users usually have is a very simple one in most products. But we offer a lot of things, right? Like we're kind of building this mega app, which which is all inclusive of of a bunch of different things where which exist standalone in other apps right so for example we have we have built certain tools like for example we have a rias tool on the music community which is a whole other app in itself we've built a way where you can create and publish rap videos which is a whole other app which exists which was built by facebook right and our offerings are are a lot and they vary a lot through each community and each category as well um, and at the same time, like Ruthwick mentioned, um, the kind of customers which come to our platform vary drastically based, based on what kind of course it is, right? Um, so if you have a, you know, if you look at any product, you'll have a certain demographic of people which which will be the, you know, initial people who come onto that, right? Or or you know, even later on. But for us, for example, if you look at Neha Kakkar, so. Um, that is more of a tier three, four audience and, uh, you know, coming from, you know, uh, more heavily towards a lower income bracket. If you look at Biswa, that's all tier one audience with a higher income bracket. If you look at gaming course, that's all kids in school or college. Um, so they, you know, based on course to course, um, the demographic which is coming in is completely different. And how do you, what is the first thing that you show? How do you onboard them so that they start engaging is a, becomes a fairly complicated product because you can't build one design fits all solution, right? It's difficult to build a one design fits all solution because the audience coming in is very varied. Um, so it's, it's, it's complicated in the sense, how do you build something generic, but at the same time, which, which works for everyone. Um, that's why I think we chose to go with this problem statement. Nice, nice, nice. Um, would you all want to also share about how you would want to score today's finalists? Uh, yep, sure. I think um, primarily a couple of things. Um, I think one major focus would be um, since everyone's put in most of the effort towards creating and building the presentations. So that would be one aspect of it. Um, I think the second aspect would be um, like you know, how they've went about researching, right? Like what's actually gone on to come to that conclusion, right? And the third aspect, I think, which is the most important, like, you know, if we're asked cross questioning, um, do their hypothesis or whatever they've analyzed, do those actually, are they able to hold up to the cross questioning? Um, so I think that's primarily the main thing that we would look at the presentation itself, um, the background, the research, and the aspect of being able to hold up to cross questioning. Awesome, awesome. Thanks for sharing that. Um, folks, if you have any questions, do add it to the QA tab. We'll be happy to pick that towards the end. We do have a fireside lined up. Um, right now, would love to invite our finalists. If you have any questions uh, in general about you know the teardown, put that on the chat. If you'll have any questions around front row, anything around product management, um, you know, anything that you'd like to learn from our two mentors, here, put that on the Q&A and uh, let's get started. So as we start, Shubhodit, Ritwik, we generally have like a wheel of names. I'll quickly share my screen. Let me know when you can see it. And uh, visible? Yep. yep. Awesome. So I'm spinning it now. <laughs> Okay, next up is Diksha and Monodeep. Um, let me quickly come back to this. Folks, if you could raise your hand, I'll quickly bring you up on stage. Okay, 
Diksha is here. Hi, Diksha. Hi. I hope I Yes, perfect. Monodeep is here as well. Um, I am a little bit of an air meet uh, noob. So can someone tell me how I can switch my video? It's yeah. there right at the bottom. Uh, you'll see a video icon which has a cross. All right, yeah, it's coming right now. Thank you. I didn't see that till I was born. Perfect. Perfect. Now we can see you. All good. Um, we just want to test which one of you is going to be sharing your screen. I'll be sharing my screen. Deeksha. Perfect. Do try that out. Um, I'll quickly walk you through. It is nine minutes. I mean, I know we had an answer as 10 minutes, but since we started a little late and usually what happens, people tend to go a little over. So I'll keep nine minutes as a presentation time. You'll have one minute to complete 30 seconds to 60 seconds to wrap up whichever slide you're on. Think of it as a 10 minute buffer. There's two minutes for cross questioning. So you'll have a total of 12 minutes. Finish early, no problem. But whichever slide you are on at nine minutes will be your last slide. Right? And um, post that, like Shibuti mentioned, I think one of the major points of consideration will also be the questions that they ask. Try coming back with an uh, explanation to that. That should help you in the scoring. And let's get started. If you can share your screen. Yep. You can spend the first 30 seconds just explaining about your background as well so that our mentors um, get to break the ice there. And then you can get started. Just one second. Perfect. We can see a screen. It is 17.24. Deeksha, Monodeep, over to you. Your time starts now. All the best. Okay, so I think I'll give you guys a quick intro first. So basically, we're both students at the Indian College of uh, Indian School of Business as we speak. Uh, both come from different backgrounds. I come from a marketing background. Uh, Diksha comes from a, a coding slash analyst kind of a background. We're both trying to break into product management. And this is just something that we're kind of doing along with our course. Um, it was a, like a really great exercise. Diksha, if you want to add something from yourself. No, no, go ahead. Just jump into it. <laughs> Cool. So should we just go ahead with the, yeah, should we go ahead with the Tehran? Yep. Uh, Diksha, if we can, let's just start from like slide four, uh, the personas, because I think there's enough context yeah. about front row and the problem statement. Cool. Should I start? Yep. yep. Go right. yes, please. So, yes. Cool. So, um, yeah, I think, uh, uh, first of all, thank you so much for this opportunity. It's been a really great exercise, uh, you know, just learning about front row. I think it's a great mission that you guys are on. Uh, I think the problem statement has already been contextualized. So I just want to kind of uh, contextualize that in the context of a couple of personas that we've identified. So basically, this is our first persona. His name is Raghu. He's basically a student who comes from modest means, uh, lives in Mumbai, loves sports and music. What he bas what he's basically trying to do is explore like a career uh, in his passion. Uh, but he's frustrated by his like parents and society's lack of support. Uh, he's also a little price sensitive, so he can't completely invest in the courses or equipment and is also kind of looking for a mentor to guide him through these first steps of his journey. Uh, next slide. Um, so uh, Rahul, basically his main pain points are that, uh, you know, he's price sensitive. Uh, he doesn't know if he has access to all the equipment. Like I said, uh, the, there's no guidance per se. There's also a little like less tech savvy um, and um, for, for this, the main solutions that we're essentially uh, looking to explore um, is give him a sense of like, give him more trial options, right? So restructure the kind of the sessions tab, give them a flavor of what the app is all about. Definitely kind of add a language preference maybe of Hindi to, to basically enable him to navigate the app a little easier. Um, uh, also like a chat support or some sort of a genie or a uh, genie of sorts that can guide them through the first aspects of the journey. Basis a preference survey that they fill. I know as a new user, you do fill a short reference survey, but I think given that the demographic is so wide, there are opportunities to capture more data points to tailor kind of the recommendations. Um, uh, the next persona, Diksha, uh, if you can move on. So the next persona is Siddhant. He is like an affluent techie. He's gregarious, he's outgoing, he's fun loving. Uh, what he wants to do is basically live a, like a well-rounded life, uh, but he finds very little time to essentially pursue anything outside of work. He dreams of like jamming with his friends at a beach in Goa. Um, uh, but he basically needs like flexible learning options. And he's also a little unsure about which hobby essentially sparks his interest, kind of open to like, uh, you know, trying different things out. Um, the problem that he majorly faces is that this, this lack of commitment, conviction and follow through. So he starts something and often like loses interest and can't follow through with it. Uh, next slide. 
so again with even this persona the the option to try multiple courses uh maybe you know have like a vip bundle or um uh, for each category like i know we do already in uh comedy something like that to dive deeper into a particular course can be very very useful um in terms of the lack of conviction and follow through introducing like a peer to peer angle which is already there largely in a community but the option of creating like a custom group of your own friends and like be accountable to each other that could be a uh, really really useful as well and uh, to basically guide ease of discovery i think we've already there are a couple of ux enhancements that we want to kind of touch upon which i will in 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 like the later halves um moving on to the third persona uh, so this is gayatri she's kind of unique because a she belongs to a tier 2 city uh, she teaches music and also works as a receptionist uh, in a hospital her passion though is in the performing arts she is an ardent student of classical music she's not a hobbyist she's pretty uh, like at an expert level um she has a hard time finding the right teacher suited to her difficulty level and also has a hard time kind of commercializing her craft right uh she's used teaching to stay in touch with her craft but like frequently wonders if just like it's better kept as a hobby and whether she can pursue it as a career or not in her case i think the main problems that we want to kind of identify is that the teachers that teach her they need to be at a very advanced level there needs to be a little bit of more personalized attention and feedback because she's at a more advanced level and also like the certificates and the legitimacy that comes with completing a course is something that kind of needs to be looked into um from like a solutioning perspective of the top of my head we can think of like partnerships with like music labels and schools and stuff like that that can hack or and a certain degree of focus in the course itself on being able to commercialize uh, you know what you learn uh creating bundles for example from like beginner to advanced can also be uh, uh, an avenue that we can explore and we can also potentially bring like much more seasoned classical experts onto the platform apart from the ones that we uh, like already have so coming to the next bit which is the ux enhancements um these are some of the areas that we kind of want to work on i've touched upon this so i, I might go through them a little faster um one is kind of adding a, a referral uh, just to download the app there's an option to gift courses but i think the referral system needs to kind of be built into the in app gamification and rewarded through like cash discounts prizes etc uh this would be applicable to all personas it kind of solves the problem of like retention uh adding a language preference is especially useful for someone like ragu who belongs to a tier 2 tier 3 city again helps with ease of navigation activation adoption uh structuring the practice sessions uh in a very uh, uh good manner which in induces trial is again useful for all personas helps with engagement activation retention uh the recommendation that the engine that i spoke about which captures data and then kind of takes the user asks them maybe perhaps more questions about their preference interest and then spits out like tailored recommendations can also help with activation and uh, i also touched upon like every category having like a comedy like vip subscription that helps them explore the length and breadth of that category that they want to get into um the next uh, slide uh we're talking about just standard uh you know things that can help with navigation for anyone um we, uh, one thing that we want to introduce is a filter that helps people uh you know uh, filter through like difficulty category uh, live non live etc uh i think also the cards are like really big and it jumps straight into like video uh, i think indians kind of yearn for like a crisp post highlight first before they want to go into you know uh, the video aspects and the intro and things like that and also the bottom bar can be standardized i think there are different names for like different things in certain places uh compete in cricket slash gaming training in gaming practice in others there's a little bit of like uh, standardization that's lacking there and i also feel the all courses tab is something that needs to be built into the new user experience um where people can go through all the courses and also filter at a very basic level on category i think it's a little difficult to find that uh and i uh next slide uh, diksha yeah so again these are points that i touched upon and go through them really quickly and leave some time for uh diksha here uh one is the bundle for the intermediate to advanced for non hobbyists that can be really useful more detailed course snippets we found that the live courses generally have very detailed information but the non live courses have a little less information again indians from a edtech perspective from a learning perspective want those crisp course highlights and also there's not an option to add multiple things to the cart multiple courses or gift multiple courses i think adding a cart option will help with that over to you diksha 
Yeah, so in the problem statement, we were given uh, four new features and uh, to talk about. So I'll be talking about the user flows of the four new features. Uh, first would be the live video events. Uh, so talking about the user flow, we would take it from, uh, let's say, a singing course into a particular session um, or a lesson that the user is at. Uh, these cards would be embedded and customized to specific sessions so that the user can understand the objective of the event and learn from that lesson. Uh, the user would have an option to register for the event or could be reminded later for the event so that they know uh, what is upcoming and what they sort of need to follow up on. The details of the expert and the session would be available in this card. Also, these live events would uh, be customed at the bottom bar um, uh, in the live event section. So it would be a consolidation of all the live events. But this having it within the course provides some customization to the user. Next, talking about vocal recognition tool and users' connection to the experts, I'll take this up together. Um, uh, like it was mentioned that uh, Riaz is, of course, a tool, another app that has been uh, used in uh, front row. So here in the user flow from music, if a person is at a particular uh, session or a lesson, they would have an option embedded right below the video that would enable them to uh, take a practical learning. Once the user clicks on the RIAS option, they would have an inbuilt voice recognition tool. This tool would use speech recognition and compare it with the original uh, song and make notes on which time exactly have they hit the pitch, have they hit the chorus, what have they done wrong. And these could be sent for ev evaluation to the experts. All these courses, um, these files for the voice recognition tool would be saved and can be visible in the profile, which which is added in the appendix later. Of course, uh, we would give an additional option to keep the user engaged to practice uh, songs for trending songs for their music library for their playlist as part of this tool. Now, coming on to the last one, which is, of course, competitive live singing. We've seen how Reels and TikTok have users engaged. Similar to that, we will sort of motivate the customers to uh, participate in live competitions. These competitions would be hosted by experts to add some credibility and, of course, that excitement for the users. These competitions can be accessed, of course, within the courses and can be accessed on the homepage uh, on the challenges, as mentioned that the community and challenges are something that's open for every user. So these are uh, to motivate the customers as in when they uh, do a competition, the next competition would be unlocked and they can participate. To engage the community, there's an option to like, comment, share, and even save the audio for these competitions. We've discussed the uh, different tools and the UX enhancements. So let's talk about how successful this is going to be and what are the target points. Talking about acquisition, Leveraging social media and minimal marketing costs by in, uh, using these features and adding them to the app would help in uh, acquiring customers and increase awareness to the new users. Options for regional languages and offering like beginner to advanced level courses would cater to a wider audience. So these would help in acquiring new customers and of course the uh, referral that Monodeep talked about. Coming to activation, which we measure in the daily and monthly active users, the RIAS competition and live events would, of course, cater to activating the users. Also, the option to add the courses, multiple courses in the cart, and the AI-driven courses will definitely uh, increase the activation of the user. Now, talking about how a user is retained on the app, uh, the tools showing the progress and the gamification offered would increase the retention of the users because they know where they stand and what they need to do next. Uh, the customized practice learning sessions and the P2P learning integrated within uh, their social media profiles would definitely help uh, build on the engagement and retention. Uh, talking about Which, referral. Uh, new... So sorry. And yeah. this is your time with two minutes of extra audience time that the audience wanted to give you two minutes extra. We stretched okay. it, but this is your time. You have 30 School seconds to run on the last slide. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So talking about uh, talking about referral, we would have the new competitions um, and the in-app refer referrals for rewarding both the parties as well as the new users uh, that are getting on the app and the existing users that are forwarding on the referrals. In terms of revenue, we can customize that uh, for the monthly revenue growth rate and the customer uh, lifetime value. And the number of subscribers and the average lifespan of a client would definitely increase by providing the practical learning experiences and by offering um, uh, uh, these uh, additional offerings in the singing courses. Uh, enabling VIP subscription would, of course, meet the uh, new user segment and increase, uh, thereby cater to increase in revenue. So this is all about the success matrix. The appendix covers details of each of the user flows. And what we talked about in the profile section, you'll be able to see an integration of like your victory wall, um, your recordings of uh, the RIAs that you did, any additional feedback you want to request on a basis. And this would sort of help in the social media engagement and uh, retention aspect for a customer. So 
Yep, that's it. Perfect, perfect. Thanks so much. I think great slide, Monadeep and Deeksha. Uh, over to you, Ritwik and Shubhadeep. Any questions that you have? So I think the first, uh, I'd just love to understand. Uh, first of all, great, a uh, great job. I really liked the flow and stuff. Uh, would love to understand how you came up with the user personas because you mentioned three personas, right? So in terms of like a problem solving structure, like how did you decide that these are the three personas you wanted to talk about? Uh, yeah. So Diksha, you want me to take that? You can add yeah, it. Yeah. Right, um, so, I mean, obviously uh, there were some time constraints. We couldn't really go in and like survey actual users or anything like that. So what we basically did was first identify demographic attributes, then identify certain psychographic attributes, and then kind of see which are the ones that really influence, uh, you know, hobby learning, uh, for example, you know, income or education, right? That would influence uh, what type of, like, like he mentioned, like I think someone mentioned, right? Uh, the comedy is attuned towards Bishwa's audience, which is generally from tier one cities. So basically looking at different permutation combinations of demographics and psychographics, we, we came up with three that are represent the most diverse spectrum of users, a hobbyist, a non-hobbyist and a student. So like, I think that represents the widest spectrum of the users. That are around. And beyond demographic and psychographic, which are generally what is the first level of user segmentation. Uh, were there any other factors that you looked at while building your user personas, which might be specific to hobby learning or specific to music, for example? So, so um, sorry, I just wanted to add in a add in a comment. So, I personally myself like to dance. So that's where we sort of uh, uh, you know used. I I so, sort of thought about myself as a user and how I would fall into any of these um, dangers of uh, users and um, you know sort of want to sign up on the app. What motivates me and looking at even the competitors. So just to see what is a different user persona that could uh, cater to this um, uh, front row offering as compared to competitors. So yeah, anything else you want to add, Monadi? Also. Also to add to that, like, because we're in a college kind of a setting, we also ended up like talking to a few people that were doing this and they ended up being one of the users of front row. So they told us also a little, they gave us a little bit of insight about how they use it. And, but yeah. mostly it's what Diksha said. We try to put ourselves into the shoe of like a user. She is actually someone who does this. I try to put myself into the shoes of someone and try to use the app and kind of figure things out. Cool. Cool. Great. Yep. That's it from me. Cool. Um, so at one point you mentioned about, uh, you know the course cards right and you gave an example of of the celebrity course cards and the live course cards and you compared how the live course card had more information and more detail on it um while the celebrity card was was too big and there are, there was a video playing on it and stuff like that right um so when you look at these cards right what what metric would you analyze as a pm um of how well they're functioning and and what do you think is the primary role that this card has to play. So I'll take that, Diksha. I'll, I think you have something to add here. So let me, this is a, a very personalized insight. Obviously, something like this, before you make such a change, would go through extensive A-B testing amongst users. Um, for me, uh, when, I, when I'm when i looking at it from a learning perspective, right, uh, I, and I, I don't, I feel like it would be mimicked by a lot of Indians. We're looking at direct like course highlights and snippets that we can get so when we're evaluating options we want to see what learning outcomes it can drive to us in yeah. that context when i came on the live courses and the video in and the uh, there was some sound and uh, that video was there straight up i found that to be a little intrusive in in, in, a, in a way right and i had to click on that and like kind of go inside um coming to your second question it's about measuring the metric right like i said i think it would be extensive a b testing uh, but what I would basically see is um, the amount of time spent at different stages. So, for example, if I do an A-B test with the card, then the course info, then a potential checkout versus a crisp course highlight, course intro inside with a checkout. I want to see the time spent and uh, like number of actions or like time spent, maybe heat maps on different parts of the page and whether the total time to completion of that action, which is purchasing a course, would reduce. Maybe that's a metric that I would look at. Um, yeah, sense. I, I uh, add something. No, no, yeah, you covered it. I think makes sense. Um, yeah. so just so what I'd just like to add there is that 
um sure adding more information on the card might help but eventually you're not going to ever be able to put enough information on the card to entirely convince someone to buy right so eventually your metric for how a course card should look is just ctr right what the click through rate is how many people see the card and how many click it and go inside right so that that's the only met like that's the only metric you would concern like be care care about because um the detail page has all the information which they potentially might need to buy so now given that let's say the only or the main metric that i would use for a card would be ctr um do you still think that do you think a video card would get people to click more than like showing some snippet or or detail of information um would that be able to get people to click more i oh, i mean sorry disha god i like you yeah i feel that uh, the videos were actually too long and maybe for someone who doesn't know neha kakkar would be fascinated by seeing neha kakkar's video playing and then you know just wait for her to sort of say something and then click on it but someone who already has come on the app with a, with a motive and wants to actually explore the course it is sort of like um, uh, like you know not giving the user the exact details so maybe it can be a mix of both uh, like just like i think you also mentioned like short snippets not like videos that uh, sort of explain or sort of uh, uh, talk about the course but short snippets of the video uh, of the course in video format would do the job anyways and uh, the um, uh, courses are the course cards are a bit um, uh, you know they cover a lot of screen and you can't explore various multiple options so i think that also impacts the um, uh one aspect of the user so that would be my take on it cool uh, makes sense one just last one yeah go ahead sorry can i just 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 add one point to that i think that problem that you just mentioned is extremely nuanced cuz like you said you're dealing with so many different segments right there is a segment like us who are looking for crisp course information and value and outcomes and then there is another from tier 2 tier 3 cities that are just enamored by neha kakkar and want to see that video right so um, it's it's a very nuanced problem to to us it was something that okay yeah there's a lot of scroll it's a little intrusive but again it has to you have to factor in your audience as a whole and the different cohorts that exist before you make such a change that makes sense absolutely um cool one last quick question at one point you mentioned that you would consider adding an add to cart flow right where you could let's say the objective of adding an add to cart flow is you can add multiple things and then check out right um what like given that the platform does not have have an add to cart flow currently um if you put in put yourselves into the shoes of being a pm at front row what what is that like what metric would you consider while choosing to add add a flow like that because it does add an so it does add an extra step to the checkout Bunch. flow right so so what metric or what would you what data would you look at to decide that yes add to add to cart should be added as a product flow um make sure you want to take that yeah so i would first look at um uh, the number of users who have purchased multiple courses and the time frame in which they have purchased multiple courses so if a user has purchased a singing course and 6 months later purchased a comedy uh, course then i might not and there are multiple users like that that i might not uh, have a multiple add like a add to cart option but if the users uh, who have purchased many courses with a less time frame then i would probably have this add to cart um, um, option so that users can select multiple courses and we also have as a um, product we also have an additional offering where we can sort of provide combos and uh, you know have the opportunity to increase our revenue by increasing the offerings that we uh, perform uh, with this add to cart option like we've seen zomato you have like a add to chocolate cake also when you are sort of in the add to cart phase so i guess one of the things would be uh, this and the second thing that i would use is uh, if the courses are in some way linked to each other like if someone is purchasing a singing course versus someone who is purchasing a videography course or maybe if there are any courses that are linked to each other like filming and maybe videography so in that case if the courses that have an interlink it's good to have a add to cart option so people can purchase a uh like you know a wider uh, domain of um, hobby learning uh, in a single go so yeah Ooh. that's what comes yeah, to the yeah. top of that's my head that's pretty much what that's pretty much exactly what i wanted to say as well like it depends on the customer behavior what are yeah. they adding multiple courses in a short time frame what are the courses that they are adding 
also have we created bundles of those exact courses like for example if they're adding music composition and singing together you already have a bundle of that right so if there are these set combos then maybe just creating combinations multiple combinations and putting that under a separate window would just make sense and you don't need to add a, another step completely but if it's completely disparate then maybe it just makes sense and if it's just someone who wants to explore dip their feet in different different things if there is a significant cohort of an audience like that then it probably is worth a, a worth an experiment Cool, makes sense. Uh, that's it from my end. Uh, some very quick feedback uh, in terms of like what can be done better. Uh, I think one thing like you have to look at the persona piece, right? The initial thing that you all started with. If uh, if you have to think about from an ideal situation of how you would do it, uh, like of course demographic, psych psychographic is important. But I think in hobby learning, it also becomes like basically pull it on and pull it on out. Two by two, which is say intent versus skill level, which would be a, a more specific way of segmenting users rather than just doing a generic demographic and psychographic kind of a segmentations, and uh, maybe have a third access to it also depending on what other things you want to add. But basis that you would probably get like say eight to twelve persona combinations, and when you do that, the first thing is you have to prioritize because you can't cater to all twelve. So then you say, okay, these are the three we're going to pick because we think these are going to compose of like more than sixty percent of the users. So let's tackle this sixty percent first, and then let's talk about the next forty percent. So I think that could have uh, that's something that uh, can be done. Uh, and I also think in terms of the metrics that you all at that last slide, right, which was you took acquisition, uh, referral acquisition. I think there were five metrics that you put up on that last slide. Uh, it would have been better if you for every feature, just in terms of flow for every feature or for every enhancement had the impact what that would move. Uh, that would be a more like easier. That would be an easier way for us also to comprehend that. No, that's great feedback. Thank you so yeah. much. That's actually Thanks. something we contemplated, but at the last mm -hmm. moment, we we kind of decided to change the flow yeah. of that. But the first feed, both of them, both those feedbacks are like very, very uh, pertinent. Yep. Especially the persona one is something we could have really thought about, for sure. Perfect. Awesome. Thank you so much for that. I think the feedback definitely helps. So uh, we'll probably continue Absolutely. on that format. And Again, thanks time. for this opportunity, guys. Thanks for yeah, us. Thank you so much. Thanks for the yes. 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 presentation. All the best. Do stay tuned. Perfect. With that, let's call upon our next mentors. Just share my screen again. Let me know if you can see my screen. So, Tiki, you're up next. And right after that is when we'll have Rohan. Uh, my screen. So, Tiki, if you could raise your hand, I'll just pull you up on stage. Satiki, can you hear us? Yeah, yeah, yeah one second. So, hey. Hey, hello. Hey, 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 we can see you, we can hear you. If yeah. you could share your screen. Yeah, yeah. Rules, yeah, rules remain the same. But uh, the two extra minutes is only if the audience likes the first 10 minutes. So, all the best. Yeah, I'm, uh, is the screen uh, presentable now? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Perfect. So, yeah, we yeah. can see your screen now. Yeah. Uh, yes, your 10 minutes starts now. All the best. Over yeah. to you. So first of all, thanks to the whole product folks team for like shortlisting me. Like I'm still can't believe I like I've got shortlisted for it. And also like uh, thanks to uh, the front row uh, leaders to be present here. So. Uh, by assessing the problem statement, uh, like I hear, like the I tried to put the solution along with the problem statement in the form of a storytelling, and the user is me. So a, a, a brief intro about me is like I recently graduated uh, from like my I completed my recently engineering degree. Uh, I have a short quint uh, with a startup. So like uh, you can uh, like I, I am also a fan of uh, music and rap like I am I'm not a singer or a rapper but I like to hear them and I am also uh, very much uh, enthusiastic in taking part-time courses 
so this is a brief about a user persona which is here uh, like uh, the user is me here maybe the figure uh, resembles me like i don't know so like yeah so let's get started so like uh, as in lockdown like uh, I, i am discussing one day with my friend milind like hey like uh, what are we up to like any new app because everybody is like uh using like enough of facebook and instagram and snapchats and like let's try to figure out some else app so milin suggested me one day some app like uh suddenly then then one day on thought pop up in me i was like left bored alone like okay like milin has told me some app like some back row or something so like then when i googled it like then i found no the name is actually front row and then i landed up on the app like on the app so uh, when it, just when i like uh, log into the rap section like it was the first aha moment for me just when i looked onto the uh, picture of divine and the whole gully gang team it was like i was like okay uh, this thing i need to do like i you are getting a course from the premium rap stars of the country so i i already got hooked with that uh, thing what front row did here so coming to the next slide i when i scroll down in the rap section only like they were uh, giving uh, cards of comedy so a, a user who is not aware of what front row is actually he can uh, also get to see okay like they are not only offering things in rap they are also offering uh, comedy things and that also from premium comedy uh, comedians of the country so it's again a, 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 an aha moment like uh, when i like okay i can also learn comedy that too from the uh, premium uh, comedians of the country so uh, then i uh, scrolled at, la, uh, at uh, to the next part of the uh, thing and to my much surprise i found okay they are also offering live courses and that too from sharul i think uh, everybody who is a, a a rap fan they knows who sharul is like he is a member of gully gang and he is a superstar right and like you can got to learn live from it and when i check the price that is also it's okay like it's around 10k i feel so uh, but here's a catch but there's a problem i feel this course was present at the third uh, third uh, third third section of the screen and had the like had the i feel this is a problem like the section is present at the bottom of the feed and uh, it comp- like if we uh, calculate the attention span of today's users it's far too low and i feel uh, it it the users won't be retained up to that level so that they will wait patiently and go till this far and have this so uh, in like what like if we, what we can do better here is we can uh, take the section and we can put in the first screen itself like if 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 it's possible to reduce the real estate uh, of the main uh, divine uh, photo frame like as we can see here we can add the sharul and also sultan nation who is another great rap like music maker we can put it there like enroll for live courses just below them so that it will it will be in the eye of the user at the very first thing and they and maybe the ctr increase and they will get to know okay they can also have live courses from sharul so going to the next section when i ended up in the explore section i figured out okay like there is a vip uh, offerings of front row event like where they are offering many great facilities to the users but uh, again there's a problem but i feel there is it's present in the sec- uh, second part of the app in the explore section and that too in uh, some beneath instead of that like i think uh, it, it's very much tough for a user to discover it because it's present in a second part of the app and that to have to scroll down a bit what you can do we can uh, give promotional cards in the first screen itself like uh, yeah it's a early bird offer like upgrade to front row vip and you can ac- get access to this 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 by doing that like obviously the first first comers will have a look okay like if the app is alluring to me i may end up being an vip user but the current use case is such they are not even aware okay front row is having a vip thing so this is the thing this is the thing which i think we can do it so the, after that like uh, already i am being hooked I, uh, i i i started exploring the app more and more and then i ended up in the practice section and again i was like surprised to see like uh, 
they are offering so many thing in the practice section itself like you can record your rap you can get great feedbacks you can uh, like uh, do freestyling and a whole bunch of stuffs and like when i dig deeper into it i found there are really there's a community building around me where people are posting their rap uh, freestylers and there are there is also people reviewing it you can uh, buy some improvements and all and i really love that stuff and this uh, uh, poked me again to think okay like if i uh, uh, buy some course from here i'll get a community support like that too from free i can interact with people but uh, there's a, there's again a catch here in the practice section there are many options and they are spread across two different screens instead of that what we can do something like this we can shrink uh, every uh, every uh, practice items like uh, record expert feedbacks knowledge maybe rhymes maybe something else into some some like this type of category into a single picture like when whenever the user will land up in the practice section itself they can see itself on the first screen okay they are offering so many things let me check once so yeah and after that uh, i ended up like taking a course and like started singing kohinoor kohin so yeah that's all for me that's awesome you you invited a couple of more minutes for questions Satyaki, I'm assuming this is your last slide, right? Yeah, 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 it's done. Perfect. Thanks so much. Just want to highlight. I think great that you deviated from the normal. I think this is one presentation that's a little different. Kudos to you. Uh, also, just one point before our mentors come in is as a PM, it's great that you've taken a first point of view, but uh, that's when a lot of biases come in. I know you're just getting out of college, so uh, that is one bit, a little bit more time on user research. Would have probably given you, you know, a different point of view, but I loved it honestly. Over to you, Ritwik and Shubhajit. Love to hear your thoughts. Yeah, I think similar uh, feedback. Like, while it's always great to put yourself in the shoes of a user, it's also important to just uh, get a slightly more broader perspective to account for other personas that might exist. Mm -hmm. uh, so, one question I have is: uh, in one of your slides, you had the VIP like a nudge kind of thing that came up uh, right after the paid course right i mean in the explore section uh, so why would you like why would the placement be something like this versus a static placement that is there on the app right now like purely in terms of user experience uh, how would you think it would be different so uh, at present the this uh, card is present in the explore section itself hmm. so maybe if someone is not liking the app at the very beginning for some reason or so they will not even jump to the explore section and they will not get aware of the fact there is a thing called a front row vip so if we do something promotional cards just randomly in the front screen, in the first screen itself they will actually get to know of it okay there is a thing called as a front row vip we may take it someday so that is do you think it might be like given the whole challenges right now it is very overwhelming also because we have a paid offerings right up front that you would probably want to put up another paid offering right up front to a user and maybe not actually take them to what they might want to learn uh, so do you think it's an ideal flow for a user to just maybe again put another paid offering right up front instead of say letting them explore letting them say spend some time learn and if they like it then show the vip nudge uh, i feel like the kind of offerings what front row was giving in the vip thing i think it was it was really overwhelming for the user like they may give it a shot like maybe not at the uh, at least they'll be aware of the thing okay front row vip is there for the current flow i think in fact uh, some matured users also not aware of front row vip so we can do some uh, something like uh, we can only show this to the power users like if not all the users we can only show it to the power users like who are taking courses engaging with the app so hey we are also having a thing called front row vip you can come here so that is got it and there was one section where you said that we should probably club all the practice elements into one page right <laughs> uh, with these kind of tiles do you think uh, anything would catch user attention uh, like because it, it, you because given the number of offerings also that we have uh, it will probably look like a 3 by 4 with 12 different tiles uh, do you think it might be very cluttery it might not be able to act like there'll be one specific element that the user is interested in but the user won't find it because there are just 12 things to look at 
uh, I think uh, like this thing also popped in my head. But then I did a like saw the product of Dunzo and Flipkart. Like in their opening screen itself, they have all eight to ten different categories itself. And what I have like do a little bit of research and I found Dunzos and both Flipkarts CTR increases when they. Like uh, I think you also have seen like when Flipkart has a, those big billion days in the first screen itself they put all the categories just to make the user think okay we are having so many things so from my end I think it will be better if we can show all the things in the first screen itself. Got it. Got it. Yep, that's it from me. Hmm. Cool. Uh, by the way, nice touch at the end with the Kohinoor. Kohinoor. Uh, loved the <laughs> presentation. Um, just uh, so I think at one point you talked about um, when we, you were talking about the home screen, you mentioned how the live courses were uh, mentioned or placed at the bottom of the screen, right? Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. Exactly. So now given so when and you mentioned at this point that it, it's much lower down in the screen. So you have to scroll down and the attention span of the user, etc, cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, so given when the user is landing on this page, how would like how would you one decide what gets to be placed at the top because obviously everything cannot be placed at the top right so how would you decide what what offerings get the primary real estate at the top of the home screen and uh, how would you decide that and two according to you what those would be uh, so I think uh, we need uh, things, obviously, A-B testing to identify that, right? What is working or not. But here, how, how I came to this conclusion is because uh, you can say I am like, if my user personalize something, I'm very much fond of raps and all. So when 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 I in, when I saw Sharul is offering live courses, I, I got, OK, it's great. Like I can learn live from a, such a, a rap star or something like that. So like we can uh, just say uh, like we can do obviously something as A-B testing like power users or so who are using rap courses, we're taking rap courses or something like that. If we can uh, cater to them, this enroll for live courses, I think it will be better. Got it. So basically, according to you, the fact that someone like Sharul would offer a live course was something which was much more uh, exciting as a product proposition than gully gang giving you a recorded course just no no not that like i know like just a uh, give any a, a brief mock up here like uh, up like instead of uh, making a such Infinity a big above mock-up. above the other comedy courses exactly 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 true got it cool. would you have any other questions uh, no i think that's it super awesome Satya ki, that would be your time. Thank you so much for presenting this great deck and all the best. We have one more participant on stage. And right after that, we'll have our winners. All the best. Stay tuned. With that, calling upon Rohan on stage. Rohan, if you're in the audience, please do raise your hand. Oh. Hey, Rohan. Hey. Hey, guys. Hi. Oh, I'm out. Is it? Yep. Sorry. Yeah. Perfect. Okay. Perfect. Ron, if you could just share your screen, we could just test that yeah. out. Rules remain the same. Uh, you probably yeah. heard that two times by now, so not repeating that. And yeah. uh, yep, if you have any questions, feel free to shoot that out. If not, we. Is the screen visible? Yes. Yes. Perfect. If you could go full screen. Perfect. Perfect. Looks great. Uh, great. Roman, your time starts now. All the best. Okay. Uh, hey guys, hi. Um, I'm Roman Mehtar. I'm assistant marketing manager at Uptight right now, and uh, this is my first ever product tie down that I'm going to be product of and uh, intro. Um, so yeah, without further ado, let's start with uh, today's problem statement. So let's let's start with front row like uh, like we'll just go through this quickly. Uh, so let's take a company that enables everyone to pursue their passions slash hobbies. Um, it's varied genres that's thinking, comedy, uh, cricket, rap, music, uh, and so on. Um, after that, I did like a a, good, a bit of a research on the on the app, which I saw like four point three rating of uh, like six fifty k times downloaded since the time of launch, and the uh, product features that we have like the live classes, the competitions, we create and create new talent, uh, create share and showcase your talent, and then practice, and finally the certification. Um, Roman, so yeah. sorry to interrupt, uh, folks. Are you able to hear him? Okay, or 
Do you see a disturbance? Um, yeah, there is a slight disturbance. There is okay. slight disturbance. Maybe it's your headphone. Um, is is it better now? L or seems it better to me. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Thanks. Okay. Um, so coming to the problem statement, we had like three three pain points, which is discover and guide users to the perfect new course for their hobbies. Um, showcase the users the different interesting avenues that uh, the user can take, and of course guide older users for the clear map uh, journey. Uh, we had an uh, insight uh, in one of the problem statement which was given, uh, which is like a lot of people doesn't want to enroll to a course at the at the time they log in, but they are quite interested to invest their time, effort, and energy to adapt or learn a new hobby per se. And um, also when it's things uh, it's already it's was given that uh, when uh, people land on the on the app uh, people kind of get lost uh, due to like varied front row offense which is live courses celebrity courses and um, community as well um, so, uh, so as, uh, as we know that the scope is um, community and like music community so I thought why not just start with why community is required so I thought from like two uh, standpoints which is end users and front row so for end users, um, I, I figured out that it's explore, um, so exploratory phase, de derive, interact, collaborate, and communicate with the app and the peers. For that, that's the reason why community helps. And in Toronto's point of view, like of course, A/B testing, user flows, uh, engagement, um, understanding the potential user as well, and then building strategies to retain um, revenue and referral as well. Um, so I created like two different personas. Uh, so first is uh, meet Yash. Uh, Yash is from Mumbai, uh, a final year degree student. Uh, and uh, since high on life, uh, wants to explore new and new things, uh, wants to try every experience that one he can probably explain himself with. Um, and he's like a social media friendly uh, kind of a personality. His kind of goals are to learn a new hobby or a skill, or get some certification, and of course get some social valid social validation as well. Um, and pain points being in college and likes to do a lot of things. Um, he, he wants to learn from the best in class. Um, he wants like immediate feedback, um, easy explanations, and explore other interests at the same time. My second user persona is uh, Samita. Uh, she's from Kolhapur. Uh, she's director by profession, but but a kid at heart. Uh, while she's not working, uh, you'll either see her like humming songs or doing yoga, or playing some fun games. Uh, being at that position, um, her pain points are like uh, she, she don't have a lot of spare time to uh, try out different things. So, focus on her music, which was like a long lasting hobby she once had. Um, then no interactive teaching with the uh, other classes that she was going to. And there's no way she knows that if she's on the right track or not, especially in terms of singing. Um, so long story short, um, so Yash and Samita. Um, Yash is basically explore phase of life, low intent, and just want to try it out. And Samita is more uh, more mature kind of a TG, uh, which is halfway made up her mind to do one of the course, but not sure. She's again in the exploratory phase with a medium kind of an intent. Uh, this is the app flow that I created just to understand uh, where to click and what happens next. And the star marked ones are basically the cards which has the multiple sub, sub flows. Um, uh, to be noted here, compete has been changed uh, to explore right now. And uh, from practice, the exercise part has been removed and post from front row has been removed as of uh, as of today. Uh, now coming to the user journey maps um, as per the user persona. So I segmented them uh, into registration, learn, which is a home page, um, session, compete, practice. And the last one is chat, which I kind of uh, left uh, for this uh, teardown. So ideally, what's, what I figured out what's the goal uh, of the user personas when they are on this particular step, which is like registration, just to try out the product. When they come to home page, explore basically. Um, session, uh, figure out how the live session works. Um, compete, know more about how the competitions are and the details and so on and so forth. And practice, like what are the different ways that one can probably practice. The touch points are the details and the cards and the, the way or the, the design uh, things are taken into consideration. My pain points slash distractions will be uh, all the things that are actually uh, stopping me to complete my goal. Uh, so my goals, as I said, these are the goals. Um, so what, what are the distractions that are actually stopping me from doing that? And then solutions, um, the long story short is basically the UI UX uh, changes organization and basically the placement of um, cards and the uniform design approach. So I have like two solutions, two uh, solutions divided into like two segments. So first is the overall UI UX and second is more from the feature standpoint. Let's start with the overall UI UX. So, um, so the first thing that you see here, this is the home page. Um, it's just like a personalized feed, uh, and the second thing is divided into the uh, U uh, USB that uh, Fronto has, uh, which are the three: that is session, uh, compete, and the practice one. So this is since 
since the time of onboarding, uh, a user was asked like what uh, what was a user interested into. So when I selected vocal, so uh, if it it will be better if the my this uh, segment is personalized or customized as per the the onboarding details that were captured. And um, second is straight away getting to the what is the unique value proposition that Front Row has to offer. Now this can be your live sessions, com competitions, and the practice. Um, similarly, uh, once I click on uh, community learning, basically, uh, there will be like further three screens, uh, which is sessions, competition, and practice, and they'll have their respective columns. Uh, so, in for example, live session will have like upcoming and expert feedback, and a small drop down from which one can shift from uh, session to competition, from uh, competition to uh, practice. Uh, and this is the first screen. So, the screen that you see here, uh, this is something. Once it's customized and once the cards are customized, it's clickable. It goes to like a like a main page where someone can buy or uh, buy basically the the course. Uh, where again we have like a clear clearly stated uh, the value that a user is supposed to get the free courses and then when he when he or she scrolls uh, another one which is like a paid ones as well testimonials and FAQs. Um, in terms of prioritizing this, um, I, I just uh, plotted it on a graph, uh, like efforts by organization versus the user value. Uh, where clearly home page layout and um, all three avenues layout was uh, way more important as compared to course details, as it was uh, clearly stated in the in the start uh, that uh, not most of the people are interested to buying the uh, course right away. They want to first explore, uh, figure out the value, unique value proposition, and then go ahead with it. And um, hence, and also in the terms of efforts and the user value, uh, these two uh, uh, definitely went ahead of the course details. The metrics that I'll be using to uh, calculate this is free to paid conversions, basically number of users who are actually buying the course as compared to the previous after changing the layout. Um, then the avenue awareness, so by avenue, I mean the session competition and practice, all three of them. Um, how people actually go through each of them and figure out the value proposition uh, that, uh, what, what do they actually do? And uh, activation is when, suppose it's a live session or someone registering for a live event or it's a competition, someone actually uh, getting into the competition phase of practice is just uh, seeing the videos as well. Uh, then the second is the features. Uh, now, features, there are three features totally that um, I've come up with. So first and the foremost is with, when it comes to the voice recognition tool. Um, so that's that's one of the important pain points. Like whenever someone starts singing, uh, the, there are two important things that one needs to know, which is the current range um, that everyone has and the type of voice. So um, that's the first thing that I've created, uh, where user can actually test both of them. Um, and this is like a one-time activity, which will be saved in their uh, personal details section followed by the song that matches your style. Now, this section uh, will probably have a list of song that matches with the scale, uh, the range, and the type of voice that the user has. And it will suggest the song that these are the songs that you can actually practice too. And the same can be used for practice session. And even for the competition, this feature can be uh, used. It's quite flexible that way. And the third is just a more advanced section where once you have mastered the song that matches your style, you can also try out the different styles as well. Uh, so suppose the first is pretty much obvious. Then second is. Uh, once I click on check now, uh, I'll get the list of songs. And once I've selected the song, um, I'll get the song name here, the highs and the lows, which is like the range. Uh, this will be the lyrics of the song. Uh, because one of the pain points that I uh, figured out is whenever someone is practicing or whenever someone is singing, uh, it's always better to have lyrics in place and um, at the same time have a uh, rhythm in place. So rhythm is the next feature that I'll be talking about later. Listen to the song as a reference uh, because if I listen to it once right now, just before singing it, it helps me to adjust my vocal range and the scales as well. Uh, so that's why these four options complete the picture, which is listen to the original song um, and uh, compared with the original, basically once I've, I've recorded and then the app tells me like what was the vo my vocal range versus um, what is the original uh, vocal range, as you can see, uh, original versus you. And the areas of improvement is something that, again, like a dashboard where it will tell you like these are the particular sections where you are low, so you can try this and uh, so on and so forth. The expert tutorials, again, uh, from Neha, from Amit, or from anyone uh, on board, uh, that can be uh, given here. If still this doesn't help, uh, then the live feedback, that is my second feature, that comes into the picture. So live, uh, live feedback, uh, what it will do is um, it will start sharing my screen. Uh, of course, uh, the, the expert who is who's gonna uh, who, who will be i'm talking to um, he will be like 
depending upon the timings and all they will be shortlisted and, and the category and the type of feedback will be like singing vocals reading techniques and so on and so forth depending upon that my screen will be shared with the live user again my vocal range will be here and suppose if i want to get a live feedback on one of the particular stands of xyz song then i can probably sync it out live to the user and the uh, to the expert and the expert can actually see my vocal range then and there itself and he and he or she can actually guide me ki hey these are the certain steps that you need to do and i'll get like a instant gratification or the validation of where i was going wrong and i can further uh, practice it ahead uh and the last one is is basically rhythm uh, so a lot of us usually uh, when we sing uh, it's always better if there's a music that's playing behind us so if we can have like a simulation of all the instruments uh, that we can uh, probably accumulate one after the other um uh, so for example right now i'm going ahead with the guitar thing under the create section so here uh, there's manual tuning for the advanced users but uh, considering uh, not not a much of a users will be knowing how to tune a guitar uh, so probably tune as per the song so depending upon the songs so this tune as per the song will open a list of songs i can select one and the guitar will be automatically tuned as per the uh, the scales which are given and uh, based on that uh, i'll set the loop time like how much minutes or seconds i want to keep playing that um a, a timer so that whenever it starts playing it just didn't it just doesn't start at abruptly you know like just something some voice comes out with the guitar it will actually give me like 3 to 1 and then it starts so it helps me to build that uh, phase of singing um at the same time um uh, here again the play is pretty much obvious and save preset if someone is actually using the manual tuning and uh, they want to save that particular tune or sing the same song in a very different uh, with a different uh, rhythm or a style then they can of course save the preset and uh, get that sorted as well uh under the learn section um so learn section will have again two uh, clear value proposition which is expert tutorials now here again the experts can come into the picture neha amit or um, someone else and learn on your own the learn on your own uh, will again give me like how do i practice here? right now the tutorials that are there is basically like a video tutorial like i just see but it will be really better if i can actually practice it and see it live on my screen if i'm playing the guitar right now like what is the scale that i need to out of the ead gbe the strings um what should like am i playing the right one or am i where am i going wrong and the similarly the comparisons will be taking place i'll be recording and then saving it for the future as well under the save preset section and yeah again the song and the type of guitar acoustic or, or electric guitar and so on and so forth that can be managed um under the page quick quick heads up your on time with the 2 minute extra audience time so this will be your okay. last slide you'll have to wrap yeah, up is, yeah just just two more slides and done like this and the last one yeah, uh, yeah. so prioritization metrics i used rice uh, reach impact confidence divided by efforts uh, score uh, i believe that voice recognition should be the most important one uh, depending upon the reach impact followed by live feedback and then the uh, the rhythm uh, part as well for the matrix are uh, basically uh, the adoption rate how many people are actually using the voice recognition tool um, activation rate is when someone actually records their voice because of the highs and the low notes of their voice and the type of the voice that they have and the practice time can be how many how much time are users actually spending um, on the particular tool um, and then further using it into like uh, either in the uh, compete or in the practice session um these are other suggestions which uh, like not not so important at for this scope uh, but i just entered it and um, that's pretty much it super super thanks rohan i think this was great um yeah. we'll quickly jump to our mentors to just check yeah. if they might have some questions so uh, there was a lot of emphasis on newer features uh, yeah. and a lot of building uh how feasible do you think it is to do all of this given a we don't have conviction if everything of this will work uh and b like would this be the first step you would take which is like to start building out these new things or uh would what quick fixes would you use to say fix the onboarding problem right now okay so um a is uh, i'll i'll first fix the ui ux issue uh, which i talked about the 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 easy user onboarding and the customized onboarding as per the feedback that was taken when the user was actually uh, logging to the front row for the first time and then i'll start uh, as i said i'll start with a voice recognition tool first i'll quickly use a api testing like a lot of musical instrument apps are currently present on the app store or the play store quickly use a uh, api and figure out a very mvp kind of a uh, uh, feature to roll out this and if there are more and more people engaging with it and then uh, depending upon the research and the conviction the feasibility of a particular uh, voice recognition tool for example in this case then we can go on and further build it 
so that will be like your title of it. don't you think adding more features will just make it more like like more confusing for a user because now the user like earlier the user had 10 options to choose what he or she wanted to do now that becomes 15 options uh so yeah uh so so to be honest that so i when, when i was doing the, like a user person i was figuring out user person as well at that time also when i I actually went to a couple of friends' houses and uh, figured it out. Even they had this thing, if I'm learning music, um, I need to see where I'm going wrong. Um, like, I need to know what my scale is. I need to know what my range of music is, and so on and so forth. So that's when I thought ki if if we can somehow show users uh, what are they actually doing uh, visually, that will actually make a lot of difference. And not just so, so technically, if I'm also singing right now, uh, I might feel that I'm to do but uh, that may or may not be the case unless until I actually enroll to it. And even if I later enroll it, uh, yes, Neha Kakar and Amit Yadi will give their best expert advice uh, to me. But I will not know ki have I actually progressed because this is this is an art kind of a thing, right? I need to see somehow that there's a progress that's happening. Uh, and if I see it in the free section uh, before actually paying in the community section, basically before even paying or buying the course, that will actually help me to make a very strong decision. Ki, hey, this is something that nobody else is providing, and I can actually see my progress here. So um, I believe in the staged manner, this will actually help uh, as a user also to get that satisfaction. Ki, I'm actually doing the progress and not just assuming that I'm actually doing the progress. Uh, and the same then gets reflected into the pro paid post as well. Uh, then definitely cherry of the cake. Cool. Um, I'll just like to like along the same lines uh, here. Um, a lot of what you talked about was like Ruthwick mentioned, like building new features, right? Um, yeah. In my sense, like given the problem statement is improving the onboarding flow of front row as a product, right? So um do you believe that uh, like a similar like you took music as an example and and tried to solve that right yeah so do you believe like so you believe the best way let's say to solve onboarding at front row is by building a lot more of these ways or tools to be able to judge your progress or test your progress or see your capabilities um so how you built like how you talked about three things that you would build for music yeah. the way that we would have to solve onboarding would be to build similar stuff um within the other um categories true. as well like comedy rap etc true yeah that that um uh, uh, i was uh, picturing uh, when i was doing the answer. yeah got it so I, you believe that that is the way to go to solve onboarding is to build a lot of these tools um, yeah, but uh, of course, uh, not like directly build it first, uh, like have like a API integrations, figure out like a minimum uh, MVP kind of a thing and uh, and based on the user resource, then we take that first step and uh, see how it uh, actually helps uh, to actually solve the issue. It's more complicating. If it's complicating, then we turn to another step and it's like a, uh, or a, or a hot fix. If not, uh, then there's probably something else. Got it. Um, one of the ways where you talked about initially about, of improving the onboarding was actually uh, using the you know questions which we were asking in the onboarding process, yeah. and then you know tailoring the home screen, kind of removing the tabs from below, and uh, having the home screen be like this core um, yeah. thing that you interact with, right? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so given that there could be let's say two approaches to personalizing things on the app, one would be let's say doing away with the tabs, bringing everything to a home screen and then adding discovery through that. Or the other way could be that the tabs in itself are the core proposition that we offer, right? It is yeah. learning, practice, classes or sessions, chat. Yeah. Those are the primary propositions or, or uh, things that we offer, right? Yeah. So catering or tailoring the, you know, uh, way that we proposition those within those tabs itself, right? So you got rid of the tabs. Yeah. You kind of got rid of the core propositions and you put everything on a home screen and the discovery was and then, you yeah. click them and then go inside and, and be personalized yeah. yes. versus just uh, keeping, let's say, the same tabs. The core propositions are, let's say, up front. You click and then inside everything is personalized already. So what, yeah. are, what do you think are the pros and cons of both of these approaches? Why would you go with that approach versus let's say keeping the tabs and then you know personalizing everything within that got it uh, so when i was doing like a basic user research and finding out the persona i had a uh, again with what i feel and uh, with what my friends were feeling when i discussed this problem with them uh, so we unanimously uh, came to a, a segment like 
the existing one where it was the USBs were right there, uh, which was the, the bottom strip. Um, initially, that was nice, but the more and more I started learning about front row for the first time, it started becoming confusing because if I go into one thing, uh, then it leads to a second thing, second thing leads to third, third to fourth, and this goes, and then I don't know where I am. So lost. Uh, the same was the journey that I figured with others as well. Um, and um, that's when um, I came up with the idea that uh, rather than doing that, where users actually being lost and like closing the app, that shouldn't be the case. It's better we give him like a step-by-step -step approach. Uh, so first, ki, hey, this is since you had customized it uh, as per your uh, liking. So this is what you get from your customization, and this is also what we offer in a very bird's eye, uh, bird's eye view uh, side of a thing. And then once we get into that, because all three sessions are different, right? Sessions is live sessions, compete is a different, and then practice is different. So under that, we show you different different things. So you at any point of time, you always know where you are actually sticking to, and you are not lost. Um, so that's kind of a journey that even I had when I had downloaded uh, Front Row. I started with sessions, then somehow I ended up to like a practice, then I came to this, and then I was confused. The same I did with a uh, couple of friends uh, uh, which were around my uh, building. I, I just watched them, how they are uh, using it and then uh, figured out key uh, what was the process that they are also kind of doing and more or less uh, the similar kind of patterns were observed and that's when uh, i came to a conclusion key uh, it should be like a clear value proposition that should be right up front so we solve the, the problem statements as well right so the discovery happens so a user knows what are the three main usps uh, that up front has to offer uh, then uh, and the second is the showcase the different avenues that one can take uh, under all three uh, USPs that were given and then guide the user as well old users like what is the ideal journey that one has to take uh, at the same time and uh, that's uh, that's that's primarily the reason uh, I, I changed the user flow I tweaked it um, in that way. Cool, makes sense. Uh, yeah, that's it. Great. Um, thank you. Uh, thank you so much for the opportunity, everyone. <laughs> Um, how to stop this? I think you're on mute. No, no. Okay. He's audible. Hey, buddy. Oh. Your internet is a little bad. Folks, can you hear me now? Yep, I think we can hear you. You can hear me now? Yep, yep, we can. Awesome. I think there's a network issue on my side, so I'll just keep my video off. But uh, Shubhadi, Ruthvik, you all can probably take a five minute break now and maybe uh, just come back. Maybe we discuss among yourselves on uh, who you think might be the winner. And uh, meanwhile, we have a couple of announcements for our audience. We will keep them engaged. Cool, makes sense.
folks are sorry uh, let me know if you can see me hear me okay okay perfect awesome thanks uh, so for the next five minutes we have a couple of announcements first one is abhay has shared a link in the chat section uh, do check that out uh, that is a sequoia back startup uh, who's coming in for our next era uh, not announcing this on the live video but you can see the chat section uh, we have not announced this on social so you do get a head start in case you're interested do sign up the winners of course get a chance to interview with the company um, second thing, if you have any questions, product management related, TPF related, feel free to put it in the chat section. We'll be happy to pick that up in the next five minutes. Um, for folks who are part of the Insurgio program, I uh, hope you had a great uh, weekend. Um, got a little bit of break, but you were able to catch the rest of the sessions. Uh, from next week, I think uh, the schedule runs as is. Hope you've been able to catch up on your assignments by this week. If you have any questions, hope you were able to join the office hours that were there today. Um, we might not continue with the midweek office hours since a lot of folks didn't need it. But if you do, put it out on the office hours channel and we'll pick that up. Um, apart from that, uh, there are a couple of interesting initiatives that we are lining up for the rest of the year. And this is for mid mid senior PMs. Um, so if you know someone who's looking out for opportunities, do uh, let them know. We'd love to chat with them. And uh, we're also onboarding new volunteers. So if you're interested, do drop us a line, team at the product folks .com. Uh, Looks like uh, we have a result pretty soon. So not taking too much time. Uh, Ritik Shivati, before we jump into the results, uh, we'd love to chat with you for another 10 minutes. There are a couple of questions in the Q&A tab. Uh, mostly related to your journey so far, mostly related to product in general and front row. Um, so would love to learn about, um, first question I think was around uh, personas. We'll take that later. Let me see by upwards. The most upvoted one is, and I'll generalize it a little bit. How does competition today look like for front row? Um, I think there are a bunch of competitors currently in the market. Um, um, I think uh, probably were the only ones who were taking the core approach of learning being the center. Um, there are other folks who are building fan, fan engagement along with, you know, learning um, celebrity courses. Um, so I wouldn't really call, call those folks competition because um, I think currently in the market, the only player which is whose core proposition or core vision is making people better at what they're passionate about. Um, we're the only ones doing that. So I think, and I, I don't believe there is any other competition in that space. So the the problem statement for us is like we keep saying, building the university for non-academic stuff, right? Uh, we want people to come here, go from being a beginner to an expert. Um, and eventually, I mean, building ways that they can even make money or you know get jobs, get gigs, get shows out of this. Right. Um, that is the approach that we're taking. And I don't believe there's any competition in that particular space. So, yeah. Very interesting. So that that probably would you you would say that would be your mode, right? And on that lines, um, are there any global players that you think you might be close to? And the reason I think one of the questions that I saw, is it closer to a Udemy where your challenges are more around retention, right? Helping people finish their courses or is it on the other side, maybe like, you know, the um, premium segment, right? Maybe like a masterclass where probably you all started from. How has your learning in the last one, one and a half years been like with the India audience? Yeah. So again, I would say, um, you know, so masterclass is a platform where um, so for example, just taking an example, masterclass offers a platform wide subscription, which you can take, right? If I, as a singer want to become better at singing or music one, why do I take a platform wide subscription and two, the only core proposition that they have is just the celebrity courses. Um, the moment we started building celebrity courses, the very first questions people would have had were okay. Like I will be done. I'll watch the celebrity course in four hours, right? What do I do after that? How do I continue to become better? How do I practice? Um, how do I get specific feedback on something that I'm trying to improve on? How do I deep dive into a specific topic? Um, there is no like masterclass does not really solve that. Uh, masterclass is probably 80% entertainment and 20% education. 
um it's it's more that you're bored with everything you've watched everything on netflix you need another platform which gives you like it might add a certain value of education um but their core motive is not to solve the education space it's not to get people to become better um and your demi is more of a marketplace where where let's say anyone could come and and create these courses um they are not like the amount of research that goes into what we're building is is much above and beyond that anything can anything like a uh udemy could could potentially have right um and and it's also much a much more uh, tailored experience to take you through that learning journey right um even let's say you know like you know think of it when you were in school right each thing that you did when you were in school had a certain motive right um when you did when you took exams or tests right why did you give tests the reason that you gave test was so that you could showcase what you've learned and then when the teacher would grade it they were essentially giving you feedback right and this is one of the core what we believe this is one of the core pillars of being able to become better at anything right that feedback loop and that is what the whole community the practice and everything else is all about right um so what we believe is that we are creating a more holistic and more overall experience to learning um and i think that is where we stand out from from you know a platform like udemy as well which is just a marketplace offering offering courses right absolutely absolutely um i'll take one more question before we jump is this one probably to both of you um ritwik you broken to product from a consulting background shubhdeep you been in this space for a long time right so from both of your point of views what is the best way for folks like if you were able to give you know one or two points differentiated point something that is not there on blogs and books and twitter what is your tip on how is the best way to transition to product you know something that is that you've seen around you or anything that you'd like to share with this audience um so very interesting question because my transition happened very organically uh because it was not something uh i was not very specifically joining front row to do product it's something i just developed uh an interest in but i think fundamentally to break into product a if you have a very strong set of problem solving skills which can be built from like for me that base was consulting that gave me that problem solving skill set so if you are able to uh structure problems if you are able to go into depth if you are able to get that second level insight whether it's through data or whether it's through a lot of user research that is one primary thing in terms of skill set that you can build to break into product uh and there are multiple ways to build that and uh i think the broader and this i think is talked about a lot everywhere is uh how much can you actually just focus on the user on user empathy and this is something i think you can only build if you're passionate about the problem that you're solving uh and if you're not passionate about the problem that you're solving you will never truly want to understand the user's problem you will never truly be able to understand the user's problem and you will never be able to solve it or come up with something that you can do to make their lives better so i think one is something you can build naturally you can build through a bunch of things the second is something that has to come from within that is interesting cool uh, yeah let's to add add to that i think ruthvik primarily like he covered most of the things um, i think what you need is like as anything you need to be very logical you need to be analytical you need to be able to break problem down into smaller things um those are things which which you anyways have to do which which ruthvik covered as well um something that i'd like and obviously like psychology is a huge part of product right so read psychology like understand how users think understand what the core pillars of of what users think right like what are those core pillars which drive users right um so psychology is a huge aspect um read a lot about it um go into the depth of psychology of human behavior um and i think the last thing would be um just get your hands dirty do everything i mean when i was starting up you know 5 years 5 6 years ago 7 years ago um i was doing everything i was doing sales i was doing marketing i was i was uh, doing customer support um just do everything right and that is what gives you a more holistic picture to what goes 
on to build an entire company. And I think it's well said, a lot of people say that um, any product manager is the CEO of what they're building, right? And, you know, your own product vertical is, is what you're building as a small company within that, right? Um, so do everything, get a holistic picture wherever you're working right now. Um, try to do everything, like talk to, and you know, you just have like, it's, it's, even if you're in a huge company or in a huge organization, you might not be at a startup where you can just walk in, um, go to lunch with 10 people, right. Um, from different verticals, um, do everything, get an aspect of everything, what's going on and, and get into their shoes, right. Ask them what I can help you with. Um, when you ask any random person, even in a huge organization, what I can help you with. Um, there will be some pain points that they're struggling with and they'll involve you with them, right? Go ahead, help those people out, um, and do everything. Um, and I think that that's the first step that you have to take to, to being able to get to that level. Right. Um, I have done hundreds of customer support calls myself. I have been on the ground myself selling my own product that I was building. I've done, I've run Facebook ads as well myself. I've. So I think that's, that's, that's why I think the core thing, um, just get your hands dirty, do everything. Um, yeah. Got it. No, thanks for that. Taking that one step further clubbing three questions that I have probably that'll be the last question. Um, and Shubhaji, maybe we start with you this time, uh, since you probably in your journey hired a bunch of PMs, right? Yeah. Um, what is that? I mean, I wouldn't ask you who has been your best hire, not to put you on a spot. But uh, how did that happen, right? Just to understand so that folks, because we get a lot of questions on, um, and this is more mostly for early stage PMs or for people who are mid-career trying to transition. So from that point of view, um, what is the best way, right? Maybe from a front row perspective or in general from your past experience, is it like, hey, should I go on LinkedIn and then apply? Should I network with them? Should I cold email them? Or, you know, career is part of it. And once I, you know, make that, say, say I get a call, how do I really go about, you know, cracking that into maybe we can divide the answer into two bits if you could throw some light on that that'll help a lot of folks help. yeah so my personal um, way of hiring has always been um there is a lot of noise in the ecosystem um and how what how i prefer to look at hiring is that um i just i want to hire the best of the best people if you give me thousand profiles i will go through them shortlist them and find that one person out of those thousand, right? And it's not any one thing that matters. It's it's everything. It's it's how you've grown. It's it's about have you shown progression in your career? Um, but there has to be that one spark in that profile which convinces you to interview them. Um, it doesn't matter what channel you come through. I mean, like ir irrespective of someone who sends me a cold email, who messages me on LinkedIn, um, I get a resume through a recruitment partner does not matter. Um, and the huge part of being at a founder is, is just getting the best people, right? It's not one person that creates a company or makes a company successful. It's, it's the team, right? Um, so I put in a lot of, and this might not apply to a lot of people uh, or a lot of other founders, but personally I put in at least a minute or two to go through every profile or every person who applies irrespective of where or what kind of channel that might be coming in. Um, so I think don't worry about what channels you're applying through. Don't worry about any of that. Um, focus on building your profile, right? Um, get that one thing on your profile, which is that big spark, which makes someone reply to you. Um, and focus your time and energy on that above and beyond anything else. Absolutely. Absolutely. Thanks for sharing that. And uh, to everyone, I think we got so many, so many uh, responses for this particular teardown. And thanks for everyone for putting in the effort, right? Three of them could come on stage and present today. But honestly, I think for the for everyone who took part, who put in time to go through it, with each teardown, you'll realize you're getting better at it, right? So whether it is the incentives that you get here is just the added bonus. But at the end of the day, everyone who's participating, this helps you improve your product sense, right? So if not for front row, uh, even after this, right, say you feel like, hey, I'm still interested in front row. I'm sure Ritwik and, you know, Shavadur would love to, you know, hear your thoughts, reach out to them, you know, via like a cold email, explain more about your deck. And uh, I mean, it's it's not the end at all, right? So take this as a learning step. It is just a stepping stone. Uh, 
I personally enjoy these live sessions because I get to learn, right? Imagine 11 such sessions, sitting through these thoughts, problem statements, listening to everyone, work on it. So kudos to you for putting in the effort. You will, I mean, we do have a couple of people on the chat section who I saw who have cracked a previous teardown and who've been able to make the transition, right? So uh, just keep going for that. Um, not holding us. I know it's been more than 90 minutes. Not holding Rituk and Chabadit. Over to you folks to announce the winner and would love to hear your experience on this particular title. Uh, so first of all, uh, thanks a lot to Suhas, Abhay and everyone at uh, TPF. I think we had a great time, I think. Uh, apart from getting to meet all of you, I, also in terms of the ideas that we've got today, because like we said, this is a problem we are facing and the reason for giving it was to get a fresh perspective. And there are a lot of things that we've picked up from all the entries that we got in terms of things we'd like to think further, uh, evaluate, or actually even implement. So I don't think maybe you shouldn't be surprised if a few weeks later you see something that you suggested today actually be put into our product. Uh, so we also had a great learning experience that way. And uh, I think before we move on to the results, there were a few entries that we thought were also really good. Uh, but since we could only pick three, we couldn't go ahead with them. So I'd just like to uh, call out a few of the entries that we really like. Uh, First is Ashish Manchanda. Uh, second is the team of Avi Agarwal and Jatin Lalwani. Uh, third is Sunil S. And lastly, Mohit Garg, Shri Sai, and Chetra in no specific order. But these are four teams that we thought did really well as well. Cool. Uh, we can move on to the winners then. Um, so after putting in a lot of thought, um, I think what me and Ruthvik have uh, come up with, uh, we really loved uh, Satyaki's presentation. Um, it was a really nice, fresh approach that he took. Um, but uh, I think so we would put him at third place. Um, at second place uh, would be Rohan. I think um, his presentation, the way that he thought about the problem was um, pretty great. And uh, we put him in second place. And first would be um Diksha and Monodeep. Um, I think they're the ones who most holistically covered the actual core problem statement that we were talking about of improving the onboarding itself. And uh, yeah, overall, I think that you know everything was a, was a great balance of of uh, all of the three core metrics that we were judging. Yeah. Awesome. Congratulations to all the three. I think fantastic effort. Um, I'm just inviting the winner, Diksha. Welcome on stage. We were just texting each other like, yay, we won. <laughs> as well. We'd love to hear. Congratulations, first of all, and all the best for your, um, you know, interview slots. Prefer really, really hard for that. Hope you crack it. But yeah, for this moment, congratulations on winning this to both of you. Um, great effort, honestly, I think uh, lots for us as an audience to learn from as well. And hope the feedback that Ritwik shared is a learning experience. Hope uh, you come back on the next teardowns as well. And with that feedback, are able to do more. Uh, would love to hear your experience. Uh, congrats again. Go ahead, Disha, go ahead. No, no, you go ahead. <laughs> I give this to you. No, so I mean, for us, like we're just trying to learn and we're trying to crack it into product management. We come from diverse backgrounds. So these exercises are essentially where we learn from each other as well. And, you know, it helps us sharpen our skill set. Um, I mean, we, we are already we were already talking about how we're going to bug Ritwik on LinkedIn and like get him to give us more feedback on our decks and all of that. Because, again, as a product manager, users, right? And in this case, the user of this deck is Ritwik. So, um, yeah, all we want to do is essentially just like, keep getting better at what we do and uh, i mean thank thank you to you guys for providing this platform we had a great time like doing it and uh, like you said like we we we'd really like to we'll keep shooting feedback his way he's going to get bothered by us sooner or later mm -hmm. i already sent the linkedin invite but <laughs> yeah i mean this was our <laughs> first uh, product teardown and uh, I mean, that's what we've been hearing from everyone that you need to do more of this to actually step into uh, the shoes of a product manager. And like Ruthwick also said that understanding the problem and actually feeling it would make you a good problem solver. So I think that's where we thought of um, 
amidst everything that was going on we were like yeah let's just do this and get this done and i think we already registered for the second one as well but yeah i, I mean we're here to learn so uh, it was a really good experience and thank you for providing the platform and the opportunity so that means a lot and there's also just to add there's also so many things that we probably couldn't get enough time to like dig deeper into um, there are so many other aspects which we couldn't really flesh out onto the deck because it would have been a little too overwhelming but uh, yeah i mean now that we hopefully get a chance a direct channel of communication with the folks at front row we'll be, we'll be able to bounce more ideas off them absolutely absolutely on that note rutvik shubhadev what would be the best way for folks to reach out to you in case anyone's interested do you have any anything that you'd like to plug as well uh so email linkedin either works uh, i think we're both pretty active on both, both channels yep, yep. Perfect. i think abhay is on the chat so he'll put that on the chat section for you folks and uh, monodeep diksha thanks once again for presenting your decks and congratulations all the best once again and we hope to see you uh, at front row as well as on the next day so all the best to you too thank you thank you awesome thanks a lot bye bye thanks guys bye with that we come to the end of the august era uh i think shubhadeep left the stage but uh, okay both of them left the stage but thank you uh, folks just just and uh, just completing this but thank you so much to the mentors as well they have spent a lot of time going through these decks and um, you know providing feedback so they had an aim in between as well so among their busy schedules okay they're back that's awesome shubhadeep we are just thanking you folks i know uh you've been around for super long but thank you once again for you know taking out time for this uh uh through the entire month going through all the decks uh, providing feedback going through the ams um our our community definitely appreciates this so thank you uh, to both uh, rithvik and you for taking out time for this um we hope that you know uh, some of these folks might be might get an opportunity to work with you if not now sometime in the future and if there's anything that we as a community could do to help as well um would love to would love to rooting for front row so hoping to you know collaborate even further is there anything that you would like to share with the audience any closing thoughts um no i mean i would love to see everyone like you know achieve what they're aspiring towards um that those are the pillars which which front row was built on as well um and happy to help like any of you guys uh, through whatever that you need uh feel free to reach out um discuss talk about how you can you know get that um i think that's that's probably about it perfect perfect thanks so much shubhadeep um i'll probably catch you backstage in case you need to drop but for mm-hmm. everyone who joined in today hope this was a great learning experience to everyone else who participated feel free to uh, you know post it out there get some feedback from the community we've seen a lot of them post about this on their social media write a blog about it and use this as a reference to maybe even apply to other jobs right so use this as a um, as a document that you can keep on you know your portfolios that are building say you participated in three tier down um i hope that each time you're participating you are getting better at it so uh, of course you've already announced the next one so do definitely sign up to that but uh, feel free to use these as reference points to one uh, build your portfolio and second to take it as a stepping stone to reach out like shubhadeep mentioned um you know front row is a great opportunity today but in case there are others that you come across um here you learn the process you know taking the feedback that they shared here um see see the kind of the winner decks you can take them as reference point to see what all they've covered and we already have like a bunch of these over the last few sessions which are on the website so you can go through those problem statements see how the winners have um you know solved those problems and hope that reference point helps you uh, apart from that uh, abhay has shared our mentors linkedin profiles on the chat section so do feel free to connect with them and uh, yep feel free to reach out to us in case of anything else we are onboarding some more volunteers so do reach out at team at the product folks and we'd love to chat with you um see you on next month steda and uh, you have a great 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 week ahead see you. cool bye bye folks thanks everybody thank you bye bye